Ephesians 1 to 10. Paul, an apostle, not from men or by man, but of Jesus Christ and God the Father, who raised him from the dead, and all the brothers who are with him, to the churches of Galatia, grace and peace to you from God the Father and our Lord Jesus Christ, who gave himself for our sins to rescue us, to rescue us from the presence of this evil age, according to the will of our God and Father, to whom be the glory forever and ever. Amen. I am amazed that you are so quickly turning away from him who has called, called you by the grace of Christ and are turning to a different gospel. Not that there is another gospel, but there are some who tremble you and want to change the good news from the Messiah. But even if I were an angel from heaven should preach to you a gospel other than what he has preached to you, a curse will be upon him. As we have said it before, I now say it again. If anyone preaches to you a gospel on the contrary to what you have received, a curse will be on him. For I am now trying to, be, to win the favor of people or God. Or am I still striving to please people? If I were still trying to please people, I would not be a slave to Christ. Take the mic, read the Bible. Perfect. Thank you. What a great job she did, hey? Oh, oh we even got an audience that is clapping. Of course, we are such an energetic crowd this morning, right? Sunday morning, the rain is coming down and falling. Is that, did anybody feel like sleeping in? Well, it's like, it's like almost 11 o'clock, sleeping in. If you're sleeping in at 11, come on now. Oh my goodness. Anyway, here we go. Last week was, uh, I, I was thinking back, what should have we titled it? It was quite uh, interesting, some of the, the things that came out. And Art told me, he says, you know, you could be a comedian, but you make a good preacher. So obviously, if preaching doesn't work, I know I got a plan B. No, maybe not. Let's pray. Father God, we want... And we stand on your word to speak to us this morning. Lead us and guide us through your word. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. All right, so we're moving on. After 2 Corinthians is Galatians. And we're moving through, and that's kind of what we're, you know, as a church body, we go through chapter by chapter and verse by verse. And here we find ourselves starting a new chapter. And it, I titled it, Lord, We Need You, because... You know, it's been an interesting past little while, and as we're watching all the things on the media and stuff, how much more is it, rel like, just opening our eyes to, it's like, wow, what chaos are we living in, right? Like, you can't turn on the media without saying, like, really, this is how we're doing it? You know, like, you know, watching how, in one TV program, I'm watching a thing, and it says, it's, you know, it's shooting a space shuttle to wherever the, into space, you know what they do, NASA. If anybody has heard of them, you know, they get a, whatever, a ship or a plane, whatever you want to call it, spaceship, spaceship, rocket, there we go, to go like 25,000 kilometers, I'm going to get the details wrong because some people's like, well, it actually went 28, but whatever, that's pretty fast, like I know some of you guys didn't even drive that fast to get to church, some of you would have been on time if you did, but anyway, it's just Interesting how we can send people to the space, and yet you look down and we see chaos. I'm like, okay, so is, you know, what's happening? We as spiritual people and children of God got to be awakened to this. So I'm going to carry on with where we are. And we got to know that we got to know that we got to know that God's called us and cho chosen us, and we know who, where our identity comes from, right? Because a lot of times, if you're struggling first with your identity, you're already going to have some problems, right? Because it's right where Tiana just finished. Am I here to please man or am I here to please God? If you've, if you've got identity things where you don't quite know exactly have the confidence and the boldness of who you are in Christ, you've got to spend time with God and meditate and just receive His promises, receive His presence, and then He'll show you the identity of who you are as a child of God, right? Because if you're struggling with, you know, where the devil tries to come in and anywhere, you know, any part of it, it's just like, nope. 
I'm a child of God, this is who we are, then we can come back and look at these verses and say, okay, Paul, an apostle, not, by, not from man or by man, but by Jesus Christ and the God, the Father who raised him from the dead. So Paul's giving us an example of the authority that he walked in. Right? It doesn't matter who came against him, he knew who he was. It didn't matter what kind of persecution came his way. Paul, he's like, I got a responsibility. I'm here. What am I here for? Right? And I'm just, you know, and, and as I share this, it's never thinking of anybody. It's always allowing the Holy Spirit to speak through me. And a lot of times it's even he's speaking to myself. And, you know, I'm in the season of my life too where, you know, we're just we are always assessing. What am I here for? What am I doing? What choices have I made? Maybe that was good for this season, but now God's taken us to this season. And, you know, and, and just always be flexible, learning to grow and say, okay, yes, God, now what? You know what, do I need to take this out of my life and say, you know what, that was good for a season, I need that, needed that, but now here we are, right? That's the, that's the flexibility that we got to walk in, right? Because sometimes we get so rigid in our ways, and this is how it is, this is how it's done. It's like, but the Spirit of God is leading us to do this, or, you know, or the body of Christ to walk in this direction. So it's like, how are we going to do that? But that's the big part is we got to know the, our heavenly calling, right? So you got to ask yourself, do you know what your heavenly calling is? Why on earth are you here? Why are you living in by Tofield, Alberta, coming to the house ministries where it's raining, and then it's the prairies where there's snow for six months of the year, and our snowmobilers are like, yes! And our people that like the sunshine are like, why do we live here? Maybe I should buy a snowmobile. It's like, whatever. It just, you got to realize, why are you here? If you don't know that, if you question that, it's like, okay, so then you got to take that to the Lord and say, God, show me, give me dreams and visions. Why am I here? Because you got to know your heavenly calling, right? That's why when I'm sharing things like this, it's like, you know, it, it, it can come across as like, why is he just preaching to me? It's like, because I'm here to encourage you to not be comfortable. Who likes to be comfortable? All right, no raising of the hands. Everybody's willing. So our heavenly calling, knowing what your heavenly calling is. Hebrews 3 verse 1 says, Therefore, brothers, holy brothers and sisters, who share in the heavenly calling, fix your thoughts on Jesus, whom we acknowledge as our apostle and high priest. Right here we're seeing Scripture revealing your heavenly calling, knowing your purpose, knowing your vision, knowing your, why you're here, why God has given you first breath and why He's saved you, why, is he, why you've received the greatest gift of receiving Him, making you your Lord and Savior. Now what? Right? Because that's, that, that's just the very beginning. And then it talks about your fruit. But here's more heavenly callings where it says Ephesians 4 verse 1, Therefore I, the prisoner for the Lord, urge you to walk worthy of the calling you have received. See, Paul's talking about I'm a prisoner for what the ministry that I have to do. What, what, why I do what I do is because I don't have a choice. Well, yes, you have a choice. But when you know that there's a heavenly calling, that you know that there's, like God, the God that called, called or created the heavens and the earth, He created you just the way you are, and that in a way that He's going to use you for the miraculous, for the kingdom purposes, right? And a lot of times, the devil wants to get us sidetracked on our earthly things, Right? What are we spending our time on? What are we meditating on? What are we fixing our thoughts upon? Right? And this is a time where we come together and say, ask ourselves, what, what do we spend our days meditating on? Right? The things that I'm meditating on lately is just like the power of God. The miraculous. The things on earth aren't like as I'm getting older and yes, I'm getting older. I'm losing more hair. We were at the cemetery this week and a lady said, well, because she's a gardener, and she says, she was teaching us how to prune trees, and you know, if you prune this type of tree, it's just going to be sticks and just bare sticks. I'm like, well, it's kind of like when my wife prunes my head. It's just a couple little sticks sticking out. The greenery is gone, but that just comes with age, right? But yet, less and less of the material things. Like when I was younger, I was, I was passionate about stuff and things and doing things, and I'm like, I'm passionate about getting people in the kingdom of God. More and more, it's like, what are you doing out there? It's like, you know what? Let's talk about Jesus. How are you guys doing out there? Like, bring in the conversations. And that's why I'm not drawing on to the power of God to see the miraculous, but to see the power of God demonstrated in my neighbor's life that it sets them free. 
right? That a miracle takes place that they cannot deny the greatness of our God. Right? I'm looking, so I'm praying for our neighbors and praying. So that's just one of the things. It's like, you know, I used to have lots of desires, but now it just seems it's like God's refining that and say, what am I here for? What's my heavenly calling? Why do I do what I got to do? You know, and why can't I say we're going to shut this down because of there's something going on? It's like, well, with the meetings and the relationships that I'm in, I can't shut this down. No way. People need to hear what's happening. People need to hear the gospel. People need to be encouraged. There's enough fluff out there that's just drowning our people, right? And our community, right? So it's like, you know what? If they're trying to shut this down, we're going to do whatever they can do. Maybe we've got to shut, lock the doors or whatever. We're going to keep doing what we're going to do. Well, that's not obeying the guidelines. Well, right now, the guidelines to me, I'm going to honor as best I can, but yet it's more important for me to get people in the kingdom of God and when we see presidents saying like churches are essential, hey, there we go. Praise the Lord. You know, right? So we just got to gotta understand like, hey God, there's a heavenly calling. There's nothing that's going to shut this heavenly calling down no matter what storms come our way. The storms, how great they are, Jesus' teaching was keep your eyes on Him and He will get us through. So that's what we're doing as a church family and a body. And, keep, and just knowing that you're a part of it. What's your part to play in this heavenly calling? Second Peter 1 Three to eleven says, His divine power has given us everything required for life and godliness through the knowledge of him who called us by his own glory and goodness. By these he has given us very great and precious promises, so that through them you may share in the divine nature, escaping the corruption that is in the world because of the evil desires. Highlight that. We gotta know and bring awareness over and over and over again. The devil is just when he works twenty. Four, seven, 365 days away, a week, just waiting to devour one of us. You know that? It's like, oh, you know, we have our, in our North America, we, like our desires, some of us, you know, whatever. It's like, we need a vacation. We need some time off. And, but I'm just learning more and more as like, as a prisoner of the Lord, yes, we need to get rest. And, but it's, I'm seeing that the devil is, if we just open a door just a little bit, guess what? Guess who's waiting to devour? Right? And are we arming ourselves and our, our, fa- our families and our marriages and our children for that? Right? Because we're not communicating. And what I mean is like what we as a family, and a lot of times we bring it to life. Right? We bring our conversations to life. It's like we talk about sex. You talk about sex in your home with your kids? Uh-huh. Well, if I'm not, then who is? Who's going to train them in righteousness? How about alcohol? How about drugs? How about all of that stuff that, you know what, as soon as our kids leave and walk the streets, they're going to hear some version of it, right? Or they're going to go to the stores and they're going to feel and say, so where are they going to get their understanding of how do I deal with all this stuff, right? Because we need to be bringing it to the light, all of this stuff, because we've got to highlight escaping the corruption that is in the world because of the evil desire. So there's corruption everywhere. Everywhere we look, you turn on the news and you say, how do people, how does mankind actually get to the place that we're actually doing some of the stuff that you see, right? And it all comes back down to taking the Word of God from Genesis to Revelation and, ooh, there's a spider in this book. Pam, you want to get this spider for me? (laughs) See, it is alive. Okay. Okay. Now, for this very reason... Here it is. This is after coming from 2 Corinthians. It's warning. Paul's warning, 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 warning the church. And he says, Make every effort to supplement your faith with goodness, goodness with knowledge, knowledge with self-control, self-control with endurance, and endurance with godliness, godliness with brotherly affection, and brotherly affection with love. For if these qualities are yours and are increasing, they will keep you from being useless and unfruitful in the knowledge of God. Our Lord Jesus Christ. Wow. That's, I get challenged by that as from pastors. I'm talking to pastors and they're like, so where's your fruit? And I'm like, oh my goodness. So I look at it. Where's our fruit? Where's my fruit? Who am I pouring into? Who am I sharing the gospel? Who am I laying my life down? And saying, you know what? I'm going to spend some time with you. I'm going to take this time out of my busy schedule to love you and to spend time and encourage you and equip you. Where's my fruit? The person who lacks these things is blind and short-sighted and has forgotten the cleansing from his past sins. Therefore, brothers, make every effort to confirm your calling and election. 
Because if you do these things, you will never stumble. Right? When we keep our eyes, that's the, the whole vision of keeping your eyes on Jesus. He's like, if you fix your eyes on Him, you won't stumble. But as soon as we get off, we stumble and we fall. Because that's what I'm saying. The devil is just not saying he's got all this authority, but he's there. Right? We have all the authority God's given us. And what God says, keep your eyes on me. And I will get you through this. Right? And we have many examples. We have many storms where we can say, it's like, you know what? Here's an example. Here's a testimony of Jared. Jared got his eyes off the, and look what happened. Right? There's lots of different examples we can use, but it says God's going to use that mess, whatever the devil brought, let's say no matter what situation you may find yourself in right now, God's going to use it for his good. He's going to step on the devil's head. That's why I'm wearing this shirt right now. That's right. Because there's stuff going on, and the devil does not have the authority, and we're going to join together and come together and unite and lift these people and our family in prayer. Right? We do our battles together. We're not alone. That's the thing is loneliness. Where do we get loneliness? People, I'm so lonely, and this time I'm lonely. It's like Paul talked about not even getting married, and he didn't, you know, it's like the intimacy that you're supposed to have with the Father is you don't have loneliness. A lot of times when we have, you know, we fill ourselves with our, you know, people and we get married and we have kids and we're just like, I just need some loneliness because I got to get away. And then I spend that time. But it's, it's different, you know. So it's like, where is this all coming from? But coming back to this, it says, Therefore, brothers, make every effort to confirm your calling and election. All right. God has called you. You're here for a purpose. If you do these things, you will never stumble. For in this way, entry into the eternal kingdom of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, will be richly supplied to you. Is that exciting? We had a, lady, a mother, that, a spiritual mother of this church years ago. She passed away and they buried her, right? So you get to see that I'm out marking graves in the cemetery. We're here for such a short time. Such a short time. And what, what are we really living for? It's like, yes, getting people into, but also knowing that there's a rich blessing when we get in. Right? I don't want to be ashamed when I come face to face with the Lord. I want to deal with everything i got to go now. So when I come face to face, it's like, well done, good and faithful servant. But here it is. It's in Scripture over and over. And we've heard it, and we've got to walk in it. And now this is the fun part. Why is he yelling at me all the time, telling me to do things? Well, that's what Paul did. Right? That's what the Scripture is here for, right? In 2 Peter 1, 12-15 says, Therefore, I will always remind you about these things, even though you know them and are established in the truth you have. See, that's a huge thing. A lot of times I'll share with people or we're going to have Bible studies. It's like, oh, I already did that study. I'm like, what do you mean you already did that study? You mean you've only, you read the book of Galatians how many times? You've gone through it once, twice, 20 times? But if the Word of God is living and active, that verse is going to speak to you that day, right? Or that Scripture that God's got you in. So you can't say, it's like, yeah, I already got it. It's like, well, that's not submitting to it. All right, even though you know them and are established in the truth, you have. I consider it right, as long as I am in this body tent, to wake you up with a reminder. Isn't that nice? This is why we're here. Get to wake us up with a reminder, knowing that I will soon lay... Beside my tent, oof, as our Lord Jesus Christ has also shown me, I will also make every effort that you may be able to recall these things at any time after my departure. So it's interesting. I oftentimes at our house, I said, so what are you guys going to do when dad's dead? Huh? They're like, why do you always talk about you dying? I'm like, we're only here for a short time. I don't know. So how are you guys going to, you know, or are you guys going to walk? Is, does anybody want to be a pastor? I don't want to be a pastor. Who wants to be a pastor? It's lining ourselves up. So when dad goes, who's going to carry it on? Who's going to carry the gospel? And that's the same thing for all of us in our homes. Who's going to keep the mantle going? Who's going to keep proclaiming the gospel? Who's going to share the word, the importance, and, and saying, and I'll share. It's like the importance of God's word. Because we are here only for a short time. But here it is, over and over. This picture illustrates. See, the Bible and what we've been going through, warning, 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 warning. God just doesn't open. You don't wake up one day and you're going to fall off the cliff. 
God gives you warning after warning after warning. The Holy Spirit is speaking to us. You know what you're doing is wrong, and we continue to do it. And warning, warning, and warning. Right? But when these guys at, come to the end of the day, you know, maybe that's when they finally realize how much they need the Lord. So that's when the miraculous takes place and the power of God lifts them up and they're saved. But that's what God can do in our lives. But maybe He might not. Right? So this is a highlighting. So there's warning. God's taken us as a church to all the warnings. Warning. Warning. What's going on in society right now with all the pandemics and all that stuff? Warning. Warning. Church, where are we? Right? Like I, I'm not so satisfied. I, I hunger and thirst for hunger and thirsty church people. That we're talking about Jesus and we're testifying the greatness of our God. We're saying, hey, this, this, this miracle took place. I'm leading these people in a Bible study. I got the youth gathered. I got whatever. It's like, yes, yes, yes. Well, then the pandemic's here. We shut it. No, guess what? We're open today. So guess what? All these Bible studies, we can open them up. Well, we got it. Yeah, you can. Yes, that's right. It's like, I want kids ministry. Right? All this kind of stuff. There's things that we... You know, if we, you know, and we just got to be careful too, right? Because I know I've been talking to some pastors and they, they count the numbers every day, which we're kind of supposed to do, so whatever. Someone's in charge of that, right? So we're counting the numbers, but they're like, okay, you can have one third. So they're like, okay, we can have 43 people this service. I'm like, holy cow. Well, I mean, if, that, if that's the way you want to run it, but I'm like, 43, 44. What happens if 51 show up? What are you going to do? Right? Like, you can't live by that. You're like, God's going to lead us and guide us. That's, that's so far out there that I'm so set in my mind on reaching the gospel that those things, it's like, yes, we honor that, but let's get people into the kingdom. Let's use this time that we have. Take this time aside. Where has God called you? What can we be doing to bring people in? Because the warning is out there. Now, yes, we've been warned, but now are we warning our neighbors? Knowing, right, and from Ecclesiastes it says, what has been will be again. What has been done will be done again. There is nothing new under the sun. So what we got to know, the works of the devil are always there. Right? There's nothing new. It's like, no matter how big the storm is, the devil's just waiting there to come in and to take you out. Right? John 10.10, 10, it says, the thief comes only to steal and kill and to destroy. And I have come so that they may have life and have it in abundance. So this is the part where Christians... Are we living that life in abundance? Right? you got to know. It's like, well, what does that mean? Well, that fulfillment of the Holy Spirit living in you. and Because the abundance isn't where it's a fleshly thing. The fleshly thing is a distraction. The, the abundance is when the Spirit of God is moving and He fills you up and He gives you the words, He gives you knowledge, He gives you the power, He gives you what, the strength you need, whatever it is. That's the abundant life right? Everything contrary to that is a lie, right? The devil just kind of thinks and he gives you these little temptations and whatever. We've got to know that we're living in times where we've been so blinded and I want to keep on going. It says, let no one deceive you. 1 John 3, 7-11. to This is why we're doing what we're doing, right? We have a whole culture that is allowing allow themselves to open up and be deceived. Even churches, right? You're, you, what, what happens is in the verses that we're reading, it says, if anybody, right? If anybody ever read the very back scriptures of our book? Oh, whoa, wow. I testify you, verse 18. Revelations is the, bat, the last book of the Bible. I testify to everyone who hears the prophetic words of this book, if anyone adds to them, God will add to him the plagues that are written in this book. If anyone takes away from the words of this prophetic book, God will take away his share of the tree of life and the holy city written in this book. He who testifies about these things says, Yes, I am coming quickly. Amen. Come, Lord Jesus. The grace of the Lord Jesus be with you and all the saints. Amen. So that's why it's, it's so important that it's like, if you don't take the book, the Word of God from Genesis to Revelation, if you, and you start adding your thoughts and your opinions and your ideas, that's the, that's the mess that we're in today. Right? Where we've allowed, you know, I've been battling with the different church denominations in our community. Like, how do you guys do this? Read the back of the book. Well, that's not love. 
I'm like, well, I'm learning that, you know what? Not telling them the truth is not love. That's a lie from the enemy. I'm going to tell the people that I love the truth. So have you read? So it's like, no, no, no. If you have an opinion, you've got to take your opinion to the Word of God. You've got to align yourself. What happens if I feel this way or I have these temptations to live a different lifestyle or whatever? It's like, line yourself up with the Word of God. There's going to be more of that. Whoops. Go back. Go back. Whoa, whoa. Little children, let no one deceive you. The one who does what is right is righteous, just as he is righteous. The one who commits sin is of the devil. Oof. Can you imagine us just going out to the streets and saying this? You're of the devil. You're a child of the devil. Well, that's not love. The one who commits sin is of the devil. That's what it says. For the devil has sinned from the beginning. The Son of God was revealed for the purpose to destroy the devil's work. Everyone who has been born of God does not sin because his seed remains in him. He is not able to sin because he has been born of God. This is how children and the or God's children and the devil's children are made evident. See, that's say, well, yes, can you make mistakes? Absolutely. Because, you know, you can make mistakes. It's like, well, that means you can't sin. Well, yes, what happens is you have the Holy Spirit living in you and you can't live with it. You can't live there. If you want to live a most tormented life, that's why I say having one foot in church, come into church and play in church on Sunday and then live in the world the rest of the world, you're going to be in the most torment that you've ever experienced. I pray for you. Right? Because it says, the Bible says either be hot or cold. Don't be in the middle. Right? Because what happens is when he's talking about you can't sin, it's like you have the Holy Spirit in you convicting you, so you can't, you've got to deal with that. Right? You've got to get to your place and say, you know what, God, I've got to forgive. I've got to stop this. Whatever's going on, I've got to deal with it. And then all of a sudden when you ask for forgiveness, it's amazing the power, the demonstration of forgiveness. When you set that person and you forgive them, what freedom you have? But when the person is not willing to forgive and not move on, you just see that storm brewing and brewing. It's like, you know what, there's nothing. I'm praying for you. I love you. But you got to deal with that. right? But it's a big thing. Let no one deceive you. And it's sad. It's sad when you have churches and pastors that are saying their opinions. I'm saying I don't have an opinion. I line it up with the Word of God. And I'm going to highlight more of that. Okay, so here goes Galatians the second part of it from 6 to 10 says, I am amazed that you are so quickly turning away from him who called you by the grace of Christ and then turning away to a different gospel. Here's the parliament buildings. Have has anybody ever visited them? When you go there, it's amazing. I went, remember we were doing a radio program. We got to drive a Hummer and we got to drive on the parliament building. And one thing is I was amazed. As soon as I started walking the parliament buildings, I was like, why is there scripture? Like, I didn't know. I'm just, whatever. I didn't pay attention in school. That's just who I was, whatever. So maybe they did teach me in social class or whatever class they would teach you, but they probably did. Maybe they did. I can't say. You know, two or three witnesses of my classmates would probably say, uh, actually, they did, but whatever. But I was amazed that one of the first things as I'm walking on the parliament grounds, the scripture plastered everywhere around the parliament building. I was like, what? Like this, because this is something that I, that was where I was walking in. I'm like, okay, this Christianity thing, like I really had like the fear of man kind of thinking because I'm like, oh, I don't want to be one of those weird Christians that are kind of out there. What happened to me now? I'm out there big time. But it's like, wow. It, it, my eyes were open to it. I was like, actually, you mean what you're telling me is there's spiritual leaders, mothers and fathers that established Canada and built our parliament building upon the word of God? And that's, that's still there today, right? You can read here over the east. This is the first one that I read. Right? I was like trying to read it in that. But it says, He shall have dominion also from sea to sea. It's inscribed, the Word of God, right as you get on the east side of the window. And then you go to the south side. It says, Give, thy, or give king thy judgment, O God, and thy righteousness unto the king's son. Scripture plastered all over this. Then engraved in stone. Over the west window, where there is no vision, the people perish. Like, I'm just thinking, how do our parliament building and our, I mean, our governors and people that don't believe in the word of God, where they're going to serve and where they're going to work, how they, like the building that they're working in, what, what's that all about? Like, they, gotta, they can't deny it. 
I'm sure like, and there's lots of places that are trying to chisel that stuff off and get rid of the Ten Commandments and all that stuff. But throughout the parliament buildings, there's scripture plastered everywhere. So then it takes me back and says, well, maybe I'm not that weird. Well, okay, well, whatever. As a Christian. <clears throat> well, you know, the Christian faith. Maybe the faith that I'm believing isn't that weird. Like there's actually people <clears throat> that has established our country and it was built upon the Word of God, Right? So over and over, we need to know, it's like, you know what, what we're teaching you, what we're preaching here is nothing new, right? But it's also giving us guidelines to live in a world that we live in. All right. But turning away, how quickly have we turned away? Well, right, when you're looking, it's like, wow, when, when we hear testimonies of our governors and that were Christians, they had have prayer meetings before, and that's still happening in some places today, for sure, right? God is he's still working, he's doing, but the thing is, a lot of our rules and our, and our governing system is like, wow, how fast have we turned a blind eye from God? Right? We're going to do it our way. We have better ideas, we have our opinions, and we're going to do it this way. We're going to govern in, we're going to govern <clears throat> by man's ideas. It's like, Jesus is like, have fun with that. How's that working out for you when you see this? Matthew 24, 6 to 8, he says, you are going to hear of wars and rumors of wars. See that you are not alarmed, because these things must take place, but the end is not yet. For nation will rise up against nation and kingdom against kingdom. There will be famines and earthquakes in various places. All these events are the beginnings of birth pains. Right? Because personally, I, you know, I like to have everything neat and tidy and everything perfect. Everything around me is going to be perfect. But then when I line up to the Word of God, God's testing me and training me and teaching me that it ain't going to be that way. You're going to have wars. I don't like war. I don't want to shoot people. I don't want to do that. Right? Well, most of our grandparents were all involved in war. It's nothing new to them. Right? Famines. And, and you know, I, I got sent a... <clears throat> The hailstorm that went through Australia last week. Like baseball size and softball size of ice coming down. Just destroying everything. Like you think a car windshield, it just nothing left. And they're like, wow. All these things you have here, because this one video was like, this was their car. Like they had nice mag wheels and it was a really nice car getting absolutely destroyed. That's what's to come. All those things that we live and we're passionate about means nothing. Right? At the end of our days, that's why I'm going to, got to prepare us, church, that at the end of our days, you, you take nothing with you. All the stuff that we work so hard, why do we work so hard? What do we, you got to assess, why do I do what I'm doing? Why am I building what I'm building? For the kingdom of God. And how, and the thing is, now in these times of pandemics, and you know, you see people, it's like, how. Do they get to the place that they're destroying things and wrecking stuff over a situation? It's not even against, it's against, it's the devil's work, period. Right? People will say it's against racial stuff, and no. What does the Word of God say? Christians, churches, there is neither Jew nor Greek, there is neither bond nor free, there is neither male nor female, for yet ye all, ye all, this is King James Version, one in Christ Jesus. So what we got to associate is when you see absolute chaos, that's the devil's work. Right? That's the devil's work. How are we going to join and fight that? By joining together as the body of Christ. Joining together. We're not male. We're not female. We're not colored. We're not, it's like we're brothers and sisters in the Lord. Right? And when you have that, it's interesting. Most of my friends and the people that are different colors than me, a lot of people think that I'm dark and I'm, what I got some kind of, we don't know my bloodlines. But anyway, they're just a, it was a good party anyway. But I don't recognize people as their colors. I don't. I just grew up in a place where you have so many different nationalities that, and when you travel to Africa, you go to Mexico, you don't necessarily see them as distinguished by a race or a color. It's like that's my buddy Ernie. All right, he's Mexican. He makes really good tacos. But I don't see him that way, right? And then our friends in Africa, it's like, Ernest, do you think, you know, our little driver that keeps us alive, 
You know, it's my brother in the Lord. That's the way that we see. So we have to learn that all this other stuff is the church, as the church joins together. It's not our different nationalities. We are one in Him. And that's a huge thing, especially in this time that's going on. Because nothing, none of that stuff makes sense. But yet, this is the part we all have to remember. Keeping Jesus at the center of it all. Right? Over and over, you know, you're sharing with people. You're spending time. You're texting. And people will say, you know, oh, I wish I had, you know, things going on like you got going on. I'm like, you have no idea what you just said. Because if I didn't have Jesus in the center and Lord of my life, I would probably be in a way bigger mess than you. Right? Do you know that? Like The only thing that's keeping my life together is Jesus. The only reason why I don't go into temptation, why I don't fall into that stuff, while I stay married to my wife, while I love my children, is because of Jesus. And my wife will say, that's not always true. It is true, just to let you know. Like that's the, because uh, she is beautiful and she is. That's the puppy love stage. Yes, we love each other. But the reason why Jared is married to Trina today is because of Jesus. Because Jared, without Jesus, is a jerk. Truth. Jared, without Jesus, is a jerk. Because <laughs> that's the flesh. When I live by the flesh, it's all for self. It's all the what the world has, to, and that's what happened. I've experienced that part of my life. And what that does, it's all artificial. It leaves you empty and broken, right? So it's like keeping Jesus at the center. So this is a reminder for all of us. How, do we, how am I going to stay keeping my eyes on the Lord? Keep meditating. Keep my eyes on the Lord. Keep focusing. Keep praying. Standing on His promises. How are we going to keep our marriages together? Keep us together. Keep meditating. It was amazing. I went to a barbecue this weekend, or this week. It was amazing. I was like, wow, you, you're preaching to me the same sermon that I've been, it's on my heart. They're like, because <clears throat> we're talking about marriages, and they said, the thing that keeps them together is the Bible. I'm like, okay. Well, what do you mean? Well, they're like, well, every situation or every decision they're going to make, they align themselves with the Word of God. I'm like, high five! This is awesome! Okay, uh, yes, yeah, I'm getting to that part. Just patience, okay? So when, yes, contention, contention comes, and your wife tells you what to do, you submit and say, you're right. Okay, there. anyway. Then, so anyway, yes, and then they get to the, when there's decision and there's contention and they're fighting, what do they do? They take it to the Word of God and say, what does the Word of God say? And you know what? This is the other thing that was like, ah! Ever have those moments? Ah! Ah! This is live stream. No! Hear that? No! It's better than the. Oh, whatever. You know what she said? We have to be teachable. Bing, 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 bing. Because if you just read it and you don't receive it, it's just out the window. You've lost the whole. If you're not willing to be teachable and humble yourself, Right? Because that's exactly everything that goes on when the devil tries to tempt you or whatever. It's like you got to humble yourself and receive, right? And submit, right? Help us, Jesus. So, this is another just highlighting over and over. God's given us teachings, He's given us principles, He's given us the word to highlight. He says, Live in this and you'll have abundant life, right? Difficult times ahead. Woohoo! 2 Timothy 3.1 says, But know this, difficult times will come in the last days, for people will be lovers of self, lovers of money, boastful, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, ungrateful, unholy, unloving, irreconcilable, is that no kind of, gave that the, the twang, slanders, without self-control, brutal, Without love for what is good, traitors, reckless, conceited, lovers of pleasure rather than lovers of God, hold to the form of godliness but denying its power. Avoid these people. Isn't that interesting? Wow. In the last days, God will be called, or good will be called evil, and evil will be called good. This is out of Isaiah. It says, Woe to those who call evil good. And good evil, who substitute darkness for light 
and and light for darkness, who substitute bitter for sweet and sweet for bitter. Woe to those who are wise in their opinion, ooh, and clever in their own sight. I, I'm, you know, it's interesting. This whole season two of walking with the Lord, I'm like, how many times? You, like, you say this is good, everything's good. How are you doing? I'm good. I'm good, or that's good. It's like it's interesting when you align that. It's like, well, when Jesus said all that stuff, he was like, only God is good. Isn't that interesting? Hmm. All right, carrying on here. How about this? I'm waiting for Jen to get it. Fooey, why can't I get this thing put together? Why don't you try to read the instructions? Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge Him and He will make your path straight. See, the Creator of the heavens and the earth created the Word of God. Breathe life into it and say, here, you want to live and have an abundant life? Follow these rules and these commands and these teachings. Wow. Well, and then people will say, well, all you guys do is about, you're all about religions and rules and regulations. It's like, not in a law, legally way. No, that's not it. But in a relationship, it says like, it's like a, a loving father telling his son not to put his hand on the stove or a mother or whatever. Right? It's like, that's going to hurt you. But you do it anyway. Right? I don't know why that rebellion thing's in us sometimes. I remember we were welding the other day, fixing some stuff, and I was sharing this story about when I was like Wyatt's age, I was working on the farm, and my uncle just said, he says, whatever you do, I'm going to start welding, but whatever you do, don't look at the light. <laughs> Did I learn my lesson? Have you ever met anyone tried that? Not, don't do it. Don't do it. Because I was stubborn and I was rebellious. He struck that arc, and I'm like, I'm going to show you. Bright light. Brrr. All right, that was good. All of a sudden, 10 o'clock came around. 11 o'clock came around. 12 o'clock, my eyes are on fire. It's like somebody opened and put sandpaper in there and sandblasting my eyes. He's like, did you look at the light? I'm like, hmm. Oh, yep. See, that's in us. But then there's pain and suffering. That's why God said, here, here you go. Follow this. This will keep you living in abundance. Oh, Okay. And that's why God never gives up. And that's, there's so much more to it, right? All Scripture, 2 Timothy 3, 14-17 says, But as for you, continue in what you have learned and firmly believed. You know who taught you, and you know that from childhood you have known the sacred Scriptures, which are able to give you wisdom for salvation through faith in Christ Jesus. All Scripture is inspired by God and is profitable for teaching, for rebuking, for correcting, for training in righteousness, so that the man of God may be complete, equipped for every good work. Woo! So we love the Word of God and the Holy Spirit. John 14, 23-26, Jesus answered, If anyone loves Me, he will keep My Word. Right? The Word. He will keep it. My Father will love him, and we will come to him and make our home with him. The one who doesn't love Me will not keep My words. The word that you hear is not Mine, but is from the Father who sent me. I have spoken these things to you while I remain with you, but the Counselor, the Holy Spirit, the Father will send Him in my name. He will teach you all things and remind you of everything I have told you. All right, so this is the exciting part. The Creator of the heavens and the earth, right? He sent these people. He's got the inspired Word of God. He's given us the Bible to follow. And in even that, that He loves us so much that He sent His one and only Son to be died, nailed to a cross, and there's a forgiveness through that shedding of the blood. So we can walk in relationship. And then it's not, that's still not it. Then he says, you know what? I'm going to send you my Holy Spirit. Holy Ghost. To live inside of you. Right? All who call upon the name of the Lord will be saved. And then you knock, knock, knock. The door will be open. So you open. God, come, live. Make your home in me. Dwell. Your Spirit of God, the Holy Spirit, comes to live and dwell in us. Isn't that exciting? The same God that raised Jesus from the dead lives in us. Wow. That should be that wow moment. Ah! There it is again. The, the God that created that thing that so many people are fascinated about. Wow, this is how it all happened. Lightning hit a mud puddle. Actually, no, that's not how it happened, teacher. 
right? It's, we gotta, right? it's kind of interesting. But yet, our education system has bought into a lie. Isn't that interesting? People will say, well, and they'll start arguing and debating. It's like, I'm not even going to entertain that. Why would I get in a debate with somebody that's not going to value this? I value this. At the end of my days, I'm going to stand before the Lord and say, this is what I believe. This is what you showed me. This is how you guided me. And this is the truth. So no matter what form people come to say, it's like, well, this is how it happened. I'm like, oh my goodness. Really? It takes more faith to believe in what you're trying to say in, than what it takes to believe in God. But yet the other part is, you can't deny when you got the Holy Spirit in you because the Holy Spirit, He leads us and He guides you. And you know when you're doing things wrong or saying things wrong or you need to ask for forgiveness. Right? That's the Holy Spirit living in us. Right? But now, taking it to the maturity part where it's like, hey God, I want more. I want to do the things that you said. That same Spirit that you did living in you is now living in me. Now you've given me the authority to walk it out. So I want to see the miraculous. I want to see the power. I want to see... The difference, right? We should be completely different than the people of the world. So, here it is. Lord, how we need you. Do you believe it? Every hour, every moment, everything that we're doing, we got to draw to Him. we got to take our eyes and spend this time, right? Even in this time of the whatever thing that's going on, people think there's still whatever. It's like whatever. Take this time. We're get in your prayer closet. Ask God, Holy Spirit. I've never, you know, whatever situation you're going in or in through, whatever it is, take it to Him. Ask God to reveal Him, right? Re- reveal Himself. Even with God, He's given us dreams and visions. But even though I'm pressing in, it's like, okay, God, the detail. Give me some of the detail. Because right now I'm like, I don't understand. It's just so I, mind-boggling. I don't understand. But it says that this is the same visions and dreams that you gave Noah to build an ark that were so precision. I need that for what you're taking us. Reveal that to me. Because right now, I, don't got, I just got some things going on. And it's like, no, no. I want it in such a way that you lay it out. And that's the same thing. Call out and say, God, I need this. I, whatever, whatever, whatever's going on, it's like, I need it. You draw to Him. Right? And we seek and we stand on His Word. And we're reminded, 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 reminded that this is true. Right? And we're knowing that The devil has no authority. And we're going to lift up our family members. We're going to lift our our family in prayer right now. So, Father God, thank you, thank you, thank you that you've given us the truth. Father God, I just pray that you remove any doubt, any lies that the enemy tries to sow. And, Father God, right now we lift up each and every one, even the people listening on live stream or wherever it may be, or they're going to hear it in the future. Father God, we lift up our families. We lift up our marriages. We lift up our children to you. That the devil has no authority over, over any of them. That you're going to raise them up. You're going to protect them. That you're going to raise them up to become mighty men and women of God that are going to walk in righteousness. And they're going to produce fruit and a harvest of righteousness. Father God, we just pray for multiplication. Let this word dwell in us and get it to hunger and thirst for righteousness. Hunger and thirst for more. And Father God, we just pray that we can walk out the power of God, the miracles of God, that we can actually see the living God living and, and breathing in, in us as we're carrying out your work. So Holy Spirit, we ask you to continue to speak to us. Open our eyes as we walk. Open our ears to hear your voice leading and guiding and our spirits to receive. Holy Spirit, make yourself known. Reveal yourself to us that we know that we're not alone. We don't have loneliness. We, our identity is in you. You've given us our identity. You created us in the image of God. You've made us beautiful. The very things that He created us for is what He's going to use us to bring the kingdom come. And the kingdom of God is going to bring people, the lost, the hurt, and the broken, to a relationship with You. So Father God, we need You so much. Continue to walk with us. Just embrace us now as we lift You up in our last worship song. In Jesus' name, Amen.